everyone, I'm Ronan Unchain. Episode 4 of Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Whatever. Um, Ramona has dealt with one of her exes. Uh, and now she does realize that Scott's alive. He's been taken. For what purpose? From who? We have yet to discover that. But um, I think we're going to meet uh, one of Chris Evans' best performances ever with a character. This up for me episode. This chick comes up to me and she's all like, hey, I took that dude. I'm like, yeah, what up? I like this song. I'm, I'm Ooh, like, look at this oh, animation. That's my agent, fellas. Hello? So what I do Is that El, El Coyote? Like, rip off? Bad news. Toronto Wood Studios. While we appreciate your passion. No one visits the set of a Lucas Lee movie without explicit permission. Is that a bag? <laughs> Lucas Lee is here. Of course he's here. Oh, what do you think my job is? Frost. Oh man. Do you think we could have a selfie? Oh, I can really just spot him. That's so cool. I'm happy to be part of this. Nick Frost. I think that was his problem. I know it was definitely Simon Pegg. Cornell Trilogy. Hmm? Young Neil? Neil? Love the new hair. The option yeah, his script? You're about to roll with a camera. Not like a bowling ball. The camera doesn't roll at all. You'll learn a lot on a movie set. Oh my god. Damn, girl! What are you doing later? <laughs> Are you hitting on me? Maybe I am. And maybe I am. Ugh, gross. Oh, my lord. <laughs> yeah. It's like quagmire. <laughs> what brings you here? I heard they hired a notorious heterosexual to play me. <laughs> you need to see this debacle up close. Action! <laughs> I didn't care the first time you told me. I care even less now. <sighs> Cut! Let's go again! Hmm. Hey, how was that? Uh, gay enough? Any notes? Uh, yeah. How about you build a time machine, go back in time, and never audition for this part in the first place? No, there's a Lucas Lee character, and Scott tricks him into grinding to death. I'd never fall for that. What kind of idiot would write this? <laughs> <laughs> a man on the movie. <laughs> You're a quintessential Hollywood bad boy. You can't judge me. You're on a quest to find a guy who's dating a high schooler. I'd never do anything that stupid. If I did, my career would be over. Um, Lucas. Hmm? Oh my god. <laughs> this just did. The <laughs> actor playing Scott Pilgrim is dating an actress playing a high schooler. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. You're dating a 17-year-old? ZMZ. She's 31 in real life. Oh my god. Earthquake in Toronto? No. Something worse. Ha <laughs> 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 Like Goku for almost a second. I'm like... Vegeta. Vegan portals? Yes, hello. I'm Todd Ingram. I'm vegan, and I'm here to audition for the part of Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim? You mean the lead role in this picture? Well, good luck. Watch out, guys. Vegan coming through. <laughs> I like that they flipped this. I mean, I'm like, how are you just getting this in the fourth episode? But it's like the movie dealt with... Um, the way Scott went about dating a 17 year old and also his the way he, he left uh, um, Kim and it's dealing about himself and where he's at in his life and whatnot I like that from this perspective again it's a lot of similar stuff and yet it's different that it's Ramona dealing with that stuff because she also made that the, you know one thing that, I, that one tends to forget is that like the League of Evil X was because she had Seven or eight, whatever it was, number seven uh, evil exes. 
which means there was some bad skeletons there. There was some some dirty dirt or some unfinished business there. I like that they flipped that around. And they're just giving so much to do with the different personalities. Um, I like where it's going. I like that the feel where it's going with Ramona now, and yet I don't know where it's going to go. Um, this soundtrack, I mean, I, I'm so, I'm, I apologize if I sound like a broken record after each of these episodes, but I, I cannot tell you how much soundtracks mean to me so much. From, yeah, I mean, you name it, James Gunn's Guardians and the Suicide Squad soundtrack. To even to the Holiday Special soundtrack. Um, Edgar Wright. Which, I mean, Baby Driver, Lex Night, Soho, and even Scott Pilgrim. And then, don't even get me started on the Cornell Trilogy. Um, but Tarantino, throw a rock at that. And at the filmography, you, you get a stellar pick. But, I mean, it's just the fusion of soundtrack and original score is just... To die for. And this is one of those special occasions where I can't wait to buy both the original score and the soundtrack uh, CDs if they make them available. Um, four episodes in. By this time, whenever you do see this, I've, I've seen the first four episodes of season two of Invincible. And I love this season of Invincible thus far. If this keeps it up, this gives Invincible a run for its money. Without a doubt. And this is doing different things, but this vibe, this energy I'm getting when I watch these episodes is similar yet different than what I got out of watching Across the Spider-Verse or Team NT Mutant Mayhem. It's a hell of a year for animation. I'm so happy and proud of all the people who, who make this stuff come to life. And um, this day and age, the way I see people interact, I'm fortunate that I think that animation is a piece of art and it's no different than live action and whatnot that it's 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 just as valid wow i need physical media i need a physical copy of this show hopefully you enjoy this reaction um i'm so, again sorry if it's short because the whole time my mouth was just open I just ah uh, but on to the next episode let the mystery continue and thank God they put some Johnny Cash in this.